News then. Waterford's uh, Park Mahoney, he's retired from Intercounty Hurlan, made his debut in 2011 under Davy Fitz, and he was the last remaining link to that team in that era uh, under the Clare native there. So the four uh, high-profile Bally Gunner players have all left the Intercounty scene uh, probably you know, while they were still in their peak, which would be Mahoney at 30, his brother Philip Mahoney when he was 28, Stephen O'Keefe at 30, and Barry Coughlin at 28. To me now, that's, that kind of screams no Watford, but just that they're getting such fulfillment and satisfaction out of their runs with Bally Gunner that they're getting that nice life balance. They're playing in a really professional setup. It's probably just the perfect balance. I probably saw it with Kula as well, that some of the lads, they opted to, to spend more time with their club eventually uh, because they were just getting that perfect life balance, like playing in a serious setup at the time and, you know, uh, getting their hurling fulfillment, but also getting the life side of things too. Yeah, it, like it's it's difficult, and you would assure with your brother Paddy when you're coming from like a long, rigorous county campaign, and then you're going straight back into the club with the best will in the world. It's it's not always easy to get yourself back up, and the body is just fatigued that time. Whereas, I think are probably going to go for ten in a row next year in Watford. Um, I don't, ten, yeah. not, not sure if it's not sure if it's ever been done. I think you'd have to say at those ages. Obviously, th this, those are the ages where they stepped away. Uh, and they're all a little bit older now outside of Park, but like you're still at your nearly peak, aren't you, at club level? And they're playing in a setup, a club setup that, listen, probably resembles, you know, anything outside of maybe the the top ten in Harlan. It would probably resemble any of those setups. I I would say so. They are really really happy with their club setup. They're really really uh, ambitious with what they can do and want to win more Waterford titles, more Munster titles and another All-Ireland title. So I, I'd say that's probably a part in it as well. It's disappointing for Parrick though because like he was captain under Liam Cattell and never really got a run. Mm. Remember he got injured then and never, like he, he probably would have hard, he's hardly featured for Waterford in the last three years. He didn't feature uh, after COVID 2021. He didn't feature either because that championship was played quickly after and he didn't really get a run last year so disappointing for a guy who was a mainstay uh, you know at County Hurling for so long. Here's a question for you now as soon as you're mentioning how professional the likes of Bally Gunner would be and we know that Shawnee O'Donnell the same statsman as Limerick for example who like what's the highest ranked team do you think they've beat in the Hurling tiers? Do you think like so I, just to, as a frame of reference and obviously they were in pre-season in was it early 2018 we beat um, Westmead by 12 points but they were down a few but we'd made four changes from the Leinster final maybe a month or so earlier. Um, so it can happen. Like, they didn't have a full-strength team. They were in pre-season, but still, it was it was comfortable. Um, how high up of a team? Like, do you think Ballygunner would beat Offaly? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Antrim was the team I was thinking that they wouldn't get to. Um, and the comparisons you're making there are interesting. Burr would have been the same. Burr would have played tip around those times. He would have played the likes of Wexford as well and would have hopped off them and beaten them sometimes as well. But you have got a club team that is, you know, trained within an inch of their life, getting ready for a huge, huge game, a county team that's in the middle of a slog. You know, like you've no, you, especially back then, you would have had probably very little speed work done. You're leggy, whereas they're on the top of the sod. Uh, oh God, you're setting me up for one there if you say Bally Gunner beat Offaly. Um, I tell you something, it'd be be hard one to call. Like, how would you call that? Um, I would say, I would say, if they played Antrim, Antrim would beat them. Down Lee, when you're looking at Leash, yeah, they'd be interesting games. Now, Nikki, Nikki, you're after joining at the perfect <laughs> at the perfect <laughs> time. Nikki Brennan, former GA president, great to have you. How are you? Hello, Michael. Yeah, I think you're under pressure there with that old. That was a that was a dirty ball. That was a that dirty was a ball job. to get in the morning time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> down around, down around the feet with two or three lads around me. I'm going to get oh, absolutely time. creamed an ambulance pass. I still didn't hear an answer out of you though. No, no. I I actually think Bally Gunner, a full strength Bally Gunner, coming up against a full strength Offaly with both having the same men and behind him. It'd be a tough one to call, lads. And I'm not going. I'm not going to call it. I can tell you that. I'd say Bally Gunner would win. What, what do you think, Nicky? I'd agree with you. Bally Gunner would win that one, yeah. Yeah, just some of the top-level talent there. I mean, Desi Hutchinson, who's going to hold him down? Parik Mahoney, Philip Mahoney, Barry Coughlin, Stephen O'Keefe and goals. They have a lot of good club players there as well. I haven't said that. I do think Offaly are, uh, are, are improving. I think Offaly will give a better account this year. But uh, no, a top, Bally Gunner at their best, I think, would be, a, would be more than a match for Offaly at their best. Yeah.